What's up, fellas uh, and everybody? Uh, as Fulan Speaks here, I decided I'm going to say a few things. I know the channel hasn't been uh, that active uh, throughout this week. Uh, yesterday, I just had a holiday, so, uh, which is the Eid holiday for those who don't know. So um, I couldn't really put much out yesterday, uh, running around doing things for the family, that sort of thing. But uh, some things have happened. You know, um, in the in the NFL in particular, also NBA. This here is going to be about the NFL. I think for the most part, uh, the our schedule, Philadelphia Eagles schedule, has been um, released. You know, a good part of it, right? So, uh, probably got to say something about it. Now, what I what I will tell you guys, though, you know, I'm. I didn't rush to put thing anything out because that's not that's just is not the way I operate. You know what I mean? Um, I, I'm not looking to have the quickest video out or you know be the guy uh, that has the first video out to get the most views or anything like that. I try to put together content that contains a well deliberated thought based on what I think are facts or what are undisputable facts as well you know so this is just another one of those situations here uh i'm gonna say i'm gonna i'm gonna say this i i, I really really don't know what's gonna happen uh here with this schedule uh i'm shocked at some things and um you know, we, we're told that we're giving a given the a last place schedule, and supposedly we have one of the easiest, if not the easiest, schedule in the league. And um, I'm not so certain that that's true. I'm gonna just keep it a hundred. Um, how can you have the easiest schedule in the league when on your schedule are both teams that were playing in the Super Bowl? You had to play. Tampa Bay, and you had to play Kansas City, okay? Um, I think what the NFL is factoring in or what the reason they're saying this is because we are in the NFC East, so that means we have to play, you know, Dallas, who I believe won, what, five games last year, if that, and then, uh, you know, the, uh, the Washington football team and then the Giants, you know, five and six win teams. So I think that's what they're looking at. You know, they're looking at last year. And they're saying, okay, this means your schedule is easy. And me personally, I don't buy it because just because a team, you know, was bad last year, that does not mean that they're going to be bad this year. You know, there are a lot of things that factor into why teams are bad. There's no way you can talk about the Giants being what they were without factoring in the fact that they were in a rebuild year with a new coach who was trying to instill a new system and also the loss of their best player, Saquon Barkley, right? So, and they were a team that was more so very weak in the beginning of the year while they're trying to instill the offense. I believe they were like almost one in seven in the beginning of the year, something pathetic and pedestrian, and they came on strong later which is indicative of a team that has a new coaching staff and trying and that's trying to instill a new system. I'm not going to talk about the fact that quarterback stinks, but, you know, I'm just trying to be as fair as I can, but tells we got to be honest, right? You can't really talk about Dallas last year without factoring in the fact they lost Dak Prescott. Now, and I know they weren't off to the, the hottest start with him anyway, but really you figure they probably would have finished better than they did had Dak Prescott not gotten hurt. All right, and then when you talk about the Philadelphia Eagles, yeah, it's one of the worst Eagles teams we've seen, but, like, dude, let's be real. We had 13 different combinations on the offensive line. Uh, Carson Wentz had, like, a historically bad season, you know. Um, started, ended up putting a, a rookie quarterback in at the end of the year, who I think will be great, but... You know, it, it was what it was, right? So I don't put a lot of stock in looking at last season and, and assuming that the NFC East will be the same. The NFC East will not be the same unless all of the conditions that led to the NFC East being what it was were the, you know, the injuries, the new coaches and all of that stuff repeat itself 
almost exactly the same way uh, it was last year, which I don't foresee that happening. That kind of defies logic and would be an amazing turn of events. Okay, so the NFC East will be better than it was last year. So if that's the reason, the reasoning behind labeling our schedule as being so weak, then, um, you know, I would I would disagree. Okay. All right, so the schedule is what it is. And for the most part, all of our NFC East teams have to play those same teams. So I'm saying it's still equal footing. I'm not crying foul or anything like that. But I don't buy this idea that the schedule is as easy as they're saying. Okay. Um, then, the, you know, I look at where we get to play these teams. You know, I think Dallas has an advantage in their schedule. I understand, listen, they're playing Tampa Bay, but they're getting Tampa Bay. If I was to play Tampa Bay, the time I would rather play them, though they're the champions, is week one. Week one. You're talking about a team that played late into the season, you know, played into February. Um, They won the Super Bowl. Most of their players will not be able to, like, deal with it. Now, Tom Brady, of course, we know this is nothing for him. However, the rest of their roster, their defense, all of these guys, they're going to suffer a bit of a hangover. So the, the best time to get that team would have been week one, especially with us being the Eagles, where we'll have a disadvantage, but in an advantage in a way. You see, we, we have a new coach, new offensive system, young uh quarterback who will be making like uh, though it'll be his sophomore season he still doesn't have 16 games and so for me he's still on rookie time you know until you have about 16 17 games into me you're on rookie time for real for real all right so with all of that going on uh there's a disadvantage the advantage is uh especially on week one where teams have no idea what what we're going to do what our offense will look like what to expect what to prepare for Right. So that'll be somewhat of an advantage those first three to four weeks. You know what I mean? You have no idea what, what Nick Sirianni will do. You can try to guess based off of maybe how the Colts looked last year or something. But, you, you know, essentially, they really don't know what our offense or defense will do. Right. So that's um, a disadvantage if our team isn't properly prepared and don't know it well enough but an advantage from the standpoint of the opponent not necessarily knowing what to prepare for. So I'm interested in seeing how that goes. Um, Atlanta's a beatable team, when, and it's a winnable game. It's still going to be tough because I believe it's, uh, it's, it's in Atlanta, okay? And Atlanta is one of those teams, you know, that, that has a lot of veterans on offense and a lot of explosiveness. So they, they're a team that can be great, or they're a team that could be disappointing and awful, right? So I, I really don't don't know how to call that one. You know what I mean? Against Atlanta. Kansas City, I'm not going to sit here and say we're going to beat Kansas City whatsoever. I don't see how that would happen. So I, I'm definitely not going to call, uh, call that a victory. Then there's some other games like uh, the Chargers, for example. Listen, I'm going to do a whole other video where I go in on it. But like I said... I don't do these things unless I've really sat down and studied these teams uh, in detail. And and to be to be frank with you, I'm not really a, a big 16 schedule guy. I have the mentality of one week at a time, really. Uh, so, you know, even if I do put something like that out, it's almost half-hearted because it's it's really not really not my way you know it's really not my way but I've been on record saying you know I, I say we can win the NFC I say we will win in NFC East this year and I'm just really saying that because why not right that this division is a division that is not unwinnable um, it, it's not like there there's a staple team here who's excellent every year um I know people want to look at the Dallas Cowboys as that team. And and I get it. Uh, Dak Prescott has been doing this for a while. Um, and the Dallas Cowboys should be a very strong team when you look at the fact that um, 
you know, they got rid of their defensive coordinator. Uh, they added a number of good uh, rookies to to replace the um, like those that that debacle last year of a defense. Okay, so I get it. Um, however, year after year, Dallas is is giving these prognostications about how they're going to win the division. People have picked them to get to the Super Bowl uh, in previous years. I mean, and um, until until they prove that they're not going to be disappointing, you can't really just give them anything of the division or anything like that because they they just haven't proven to be worthy of that okay so i'm not just sitting here afraid of dallas uh the giants you know what i you know what i think of them honestly um i do respect their defense i think their coach is strong uh i do not believe in their quarterback whatsoever i think he is the third quarterback the third best quarterback second worst in the division i do not like daniel jones at all okay and uh, and I'm still not sure about their offensive line. There were some improvements, but it still is not a it's no it's a nowhere near elite line. Okay, uh, their running back is elite. Their wide receivers are good. Okay, their defense is respectable, but it's not a defense that I fear. Okay, there's a lot. They have they very well disciplined. They're well coached, especially towards the end of the year. But they still had their their hiccups where they were just you know really just embarrassed by the Cardinals and embarrassed by Seattle in must win games last year, you know, uh, which is hilarious that the, the giant fans and even Joe judge is more upset at the, you know, the Eagles for not making sure they, they get in the playoffs as opposed to not looking in the mirror and seeing their failures on their own, you know, in must win situations. All right, so they got some stuff to prove, too. And you know how I feel about the Washington football team. I respect their talent, but, you know, when you look at Washington under Dan Snyder, they've always, you know, been loaded with talent. And and many times, I remember years ago when uh, they picked up Jeremiah Trotter from us, they grabbed Sean Springs. There's times they grabbed Deion Sanders, though he was at the end of his career. You know, still, they grabbed the big names. They had grabbed... um, uh, uh, the defensive tackle, who, who was like uh, this, this, this big name, a guy who had a bad attitude. Uh, they had uh, offensive linemen. They they had all this freaking talent. Okay, uh, they even brought back Joe Gibbs. I remember for for a few years, you know. And then then we heard about Jay Gruden, who was supposed to be this this young guru and all of that. Like they're always making these splashes. Right. So until they prove that they're really going to that they really turned the corner, I can't give the division to them either. I can't give the division to them either. And I don't even respect their divisional win last season. Right. You dealt with a half ass Eagles team that was limping and you really would not have won that game had we not not started nine freaking starters many of whom were already backups as it is. Miles Sanders did not play. He's a major part of the offense. Jalen Hurts was pulled, okay, the, in, the, in, the, in, you know, in the third quarter. It's like, come on, man. So because of that, by default, and I feel like the Eagles have a realistic shot, so I'm going to pick them. I'm going to pick them. When I, when I think the Eagles have a shot, uh, a realistic shot at a division that is not unwinnable, I'm going to pick them, right? So that's what I'm going to do. Um, and... Uh, Later, I'm going to give a whole, my next video is going to be on Jalen Hurts, period, because um, I've just been hearing just so much nonsense, I think, uh, connected to him from people who, like, I mean, I, I don't get it. You know, he has all this stuff to prove. He has to improve as a passer and all of this kind of stuff. Trust me, this dude has no problem passing the ball. There's just a lot of nonsense, man, that's associated with him and the type of quarterback he is, right? And if you understand what I mean, you understand what I mean, the type of quarterback he is. Uh, there's just certain stigmas that goes along with that, you know, which are nonsense. You know what I mean? And um, that's going to be my next thing. We're getting close to 15 minutes here, and you know I don't like to go over that. So till next time, last speaks him out.